Hey cats! On the very first triage video that we did, we promised we were going to take a look at this music man. This music man uh, came to me with uh, in non-operative condition. The output or power transformer has been replaced, and we're going to analyze it and find out why it doesn't do anything. Um, this, by the way, is called a model 2100-65. And there are a few things you need to keep in mind about Music Man amps if you decide to work on them. First of all, they have a IC-based uh, preamp section, which operates at uh, plus minus 16 volts. So there's a power supply board for that. They use two completely different types of outputs. In this one, uh, the 2100-65, it uses a conventional phase inverter 12AX7, and it drives the output tubes that way. It also has adjustable bias right here. There's another model, another style of output, that is actually cathode-driven by MOSFETs. The next thing that I noticed right away as I look at this is that in this schematic for this amplifier, it is very clear that to change from high to low power, which these amps are dual power, most of them are, it switches the coils on the primary side of the power transformer. Now, uh, this output, or this power transformer rather, does not have a multiple tap primary. So I suspected something was the matter here, and I went and found the schematics for, I believe it's a later model, but I'm not real sure about the dates on these, uh, so I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. But this is amplifiers of 2100-65. Now the similar amplifier, which again I think is later, but I'm not sure, is called a 2100 and 2165 RD. So here's the difference, is that as I mentioned, this amplifier, its power switch is what switches power. So the center is off, and then it has a low on the bottom, high on the top, and it's designed to switch the primary of this amplifier's transformer. Now, the other version, the 2165, the dash RD, the power switch is just off on but it's the standby switch that switches the different windings in the secondary of the high voltage side of the amplifier. So what we have here is a transformer that was designed for a different style amplifier. Well, I took a look at it and got to thinking, it still has its plus minus 16 volts for the IC, for the preamp, and it still has the uh, ability to have high and low voltage or high and low power. And I was thinking that um, what we're going to do here is test this and rewire it uh, so that we're switching the secondary side with the power switch and then use the standby switch for the power. And while I had started writing up the circuit to do that, the owner of the amp had got, I told him that it, I thought it was the wrong transformer. It turns out there's actually a service bulletin out to do just that. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to rewire it uh, so this transformer is connected up and we'll make the front switch a standby high low power switch and we'll make the old standby switch in the back is going to be its power switch. And so the we're going to start the operation by desoldering all of these wires. And then we will, uh, one by one, put it back together again. So let's get started here. I'm not really going to test anything. I'm certainly hoping that I don't know what was done with it wired this way before I got it. But I'm kind of hoping that we don't have any problems with it having damaged anything in this amplifier. I mean, the main good news is the color code for the uh, plus minus 16 volt is actually the same. Um, I'm gonna pull the wires anyway. I'm not real fond of the way they're soldered. We're gonna try to clean this up a little bit. So we'll get started, like I said, by first desoldering everything, and then we will put it back together. Uh, as the service bulletin says, uh, I'm not gonna drop my own schematic now because yeah, somebody else already did it. I think it was actually Music Man. 
Okay, we've unsoldered all of the transformer wires, and I'm going to strip off the wires to the standby switch too, because of course it won't be a standby switch anymore, it's going to be the power switch. Okay, there we go. It's all stripped out and ready to resolder again. And what we're going to do, I think, is uh, probably do a little bit more uh, twisting and making these wires a little bit neater and keep our fingers crossed and hope that when it's put back together, it's going to work. All right, well, I took a few minutes and I learned a few things. First of all, I have our wires separated on the transformer, and I found out that this model has another requirement besides changing the uh, front switch to a standby switch and the back switch to a power switch. And here's what it is. When we take a look at the schematic for the 2100-65, the original power transformer, as I mentioned earlier, was tapped in the primary. So to change the voltage, you were actually changing the number of windings in the primary. So it changed the voltage of everything in the secondary. In this case, we're changing the voltage only of the high voltage. So that means that before, when we changed the voltage to the power tubes, we were automatically changing the voltage correspondingly to the negative bias circuit. But now that we're changing only the high voltage, the bias circuit, somehow we have to drop the voltage in the bias circuit to match the drop voltage on the plates and tubes. So what we have to do is we have to put in a different kind of switch. We have to put in a, uh, this is called a double pull, double throw center off, and it's like a, purely a miracle that I have one of these. I don't use them very often, it's my last one actually. And it's part of my, when Radio Shack pretty much went out of business, I bought tons and tons of parts from them at a great discount. Um, at any rate, the switch that's in there right now is a single pole double throw. Um, but what we have to do with this switch is not only switch between high and low power, we have to put a voltage divider circuit in so that it drops the bias voltage in half when we switch to the low power mode. So that's another little modification. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward change. This switch that used to be the standby switch becomes the on-off switch. So we're going to wire up the primary to the transformer uh, th from, through the fuse, through the power, through the fuse. Uh, there's something else you'll find in these. I haven't tested this one yet, but I will. Uh, we have a little thing that looks like this, like some kind of a weird bulb or something. And what it is, it goes in series between the after the fuse. And it's actually a temperature uh, activated cutoff switch. So if something, I guess, starts to overheat or draws too much current over too long of a period of time, this will open up. I've never seen one in anything but a music man before, but for some reason they decided to stick this in. And if it's continuous, I'll probably stick it back in. So the next step that I'm going to do is remove this uh, switch that we don't need and get it out of the way. And... Let me see. I think that's all we really need to do right now. And then we'll start cutting the wires and get everything ready to go. Okay, that switch is prepped now. Now the next thing we're going to do is look at the service bulletin and simply follow the instructions. So the first instruction, it gives lengths to, to trim all the wires back to. Um, I guess that since they gave the instruction, I'm going to do it. Seems like it would be a relatively easy thing to figure out, but this is a nice little shortcut. It tells us that the, it's hard to read because Music Man has put a, stamp over the front of this. Just a second. Let's zoom in a little bit. 
says six inches for the black wire. And it says to cut the, it's called the black with the red, but it's actually red with the black. Um, I don't quite understand that. They want that at nine inches. I think that's not too much different than it is. And it says to cut the brown wire to five inches. You can tell I'm not a very trusting person if you're, I think you can see the measurements in there. I'm not sure, but I'm cutting them off a little bit longer than they said, just not very much. Uh, we have go five inches for the red wire, seven inches for the red with the yellow, four inches for the orange. I have no idea why I said orange instead of orange, but I did. Four inches for the yellow. That looks a lot more like seven or eight inches than four to me, but that's just me. Eight inches for the green. And eight inches for the other heater wire, the uh, green with the yellow. Okay. Our wires are all trimmed. And in the case of the instructions, it talks about another wire, black with the yellow, that is not on this transformer here. So we don't have to worry about that. Since this has already been worked on, some of the instructions in the service bulletin don't apply because some wires have been changed already. So what we're going to do is just go through and get this all wired up so that first we'll start on the primary side, make sure it's all set to go, and then we will finish up uh, with the secondary side. So the first thing I know is that I'm going to need the one of my 120 volt leads for the power transformer is going to have to go to the new on off switch. So we're going to get that set up first. I'm just cleaning the solder lugs here. Okay, we've going, we're going to feed the uh, black side of the power line to the other side of the standby switch, and that wire is already existing. It only needs to, it only needs to be a lot shorter now. So we can see that we go from our uh, power cord, black wire goes to one side of the uh, ground switch, goes to the on, new on off switch and to one side of the transformer. And then to get power to the other side of the transformer, which is the black wire, we're going to connect to the white side of the power, of course. The white side of the power goes to this fuse holder right here. And it goes to, uh, of course, the white side of the ground switch, too. So this wire is kind of like not in the best of shape here. So I'm going to unsolder it and put all new wires in. I'll reuse these wires, but I'm going to resolder this stuff. It just doesn't seem like it's in very good shape. Okay, we've got that cleaned out. Now we're going to hook up the white side of our power. Uh, I'm going to find that little thing. There it is. This little heat thing. I'm going to strip it. 
we're going to connect that in series with from the fuse to the grounding switch and then also to this terminal on the grounding switch we'll connect the other side of our transformer and our primary side will be wired. So the white side goes through the fuse, then through this thermal disconnect to the transformer, and the black side goes through the power switch to the transformer. Whenever possible, you want to remember that solder is an electrical connector. In the case, in this case, it's not supposed to be a great mechanical connector. So we generally want to try to bend the wires so that they are mechanically not going to fall out even without the solder. So this is the high-low power switch we're going to use now, double pole. Uh, I'm going to use this side for the high voltage and this side for the bias voltage. We need to run a wire from the center lug on here of the high voltage side to point F on the rectifier board, which we'll find in a minute. On a large scale fabrication project, like building an app, I would have a tendency to put a whole bunch of wires on and then get out the gun and solder a whole bunch of things at once. But this is a very step by step small deal. So I'm just soldering each wires as I go through the stuff. This way, and this uh, is going over to the rectifier board. Point F. Which is right here between these two diodes. I actually found out we're going to use the this side for the high voltage since I soldered it on there. And there's already a groove here. So the switch only goes in one way. So that's going to be, the high voltage side will be this side. Want to get some of the solder out of here and clean this up a little bit. Nice. That's exactly what I want. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I like these especially. I like tinning these wires, especially. This was actually in the amp. But it's, I don't like the way it looks very well. Let's see if it tins up okay. The other end seemed to solder okay. The rosin and the solder usually. The rosin and the solder usually will clean the solder up or copper up really quickly. Which it did. It took a tin okay. The next step is to connect the brown lug from the transformer to the bottom of the high voltage side of the switch. These wires are actually pre tinned, and actually, this one's kind of brittle. It's kind of weird. Oops, 
Oh, I magically changed clothes and everything. It's the next day. Day 6,000 of quarantine or something like that. Anyway, uh, in the instructions for this, they want us to grab the power for the pilot light off of the high voltage B+. Plus. I put it a 39K resistor in series with it. Not in the mood to do that. Instead, I'm going to create a small harness and run the pilot light wires back to the on-off switch so it's running off of line voltage. First, I'm going to tin the wires. Then, try to see if we can get it on this other camera. We're going to solder to these two terminals here first. It's a little tight working in there. Good. Got the wire soldered on there. So the pilot light is ready to be connected. And I think we'll, uh, I'm going to twist these. We've got AC on them, and since we have enough wire to easily twist them, we might as well do so. Run them close to the chassis. Not much current flow though, so I don't anticipate there would be a lot of noise from these anyway. Okay, and where I'm going to connect is we need, of course, a uh, need to connect it to the white and to the uh, switched black, you know, from the power switch here. And so there are only there's only one place I can actually get the switched power from. That is from uh, right here. That's the only point I have. So I'm going to add one of the wires to there, and then the other one will cut off, and we'll just grab any any of the comments around. It really doesn't matter where that comes from. Missed a bit on that one. There we go. There's a lot of solder there. We should be fine if I can get the heat on the second wire. I'll make sure this is all okay there. Yeah, actually, it's a good shot of time. Okay, wonderful. And we'll hook up the other side of the pilot light to any place it's convenient to grab power from the white side of the power. I think the uh, fuse holder here might be one of the most convenient spots. OK, 
hey, the pilot light should be hooked up. We have uh, two of our three leads hooked up to the high voltage uh, side of the transformer. So now we'll look through the instructions and the red wire, the plain red wire, goes to the top lead of the switch on the high voltage side. Again, these are pre-tended leads, so I shouldn't have to uh, tend the leads. Okay, I'm going to connect the last high voltage connection, and that's to this point right here on the board. So our last high voltage wire uh, goes to this thing called point B here. It's a red with a yellow, and I could either splice it and heat shrink it or connect it directly to that eyelet. And I'm going to connect it directly to the eyelet. We'll clean this up a little bit if we have to. Just threw my uh, wire strippers in the trash. When we start getting buzzing out of the gun, it means that we have connection problems with the tip. From being hot and cold several times, these do that. So the best thing that we do is loosen and tighten the mounting bolts, nuts, to get a nice connection again. It's very low resistance, so any poor connection and all the nuts greatly affects the amount of heat it produces. There we go. I think we're back in business again. Yep. Whenever I should recognize that sooner. Whenever this thing slows down and won't heat something, I probably don't even need to suck out the solder now. It's because it's uh, got a bad connection. That's it. Solid. it. That's it, solid. So that should be our high voltage. All right. So we have an orange and a yellow left to connect. Originally, or if this transformer was being used on the RD series, it would be a center tap to ground and then plus and minus from these wires. This produces a plus minus power supply from just two wires. So the yellow, and the one orange are connected, and this other orange will tie it, will uh, heat shrink up because it's not going to be used for anything in this amplifier. Okay, that is it for that connection. Um, this black wire is too long. I don't like it. I'm going to, uh, I don't want to mess heating up the diode again. So I'm just going to desolder this from the switch and make it an appropriate, a, a, a little bit on neater length, I think. We need to cap this orange wire.
So that completes the high voltage wiring. The primary wiring is done. The high voltage wiring is done. It's a good idea to twist heater wiring because this actually has quite a bit of current through it and it can induce an awful lot of noise into some of the high impedance circuits in the amplifier. Good. We should be uh, well connected here. Um, what I'm going to do is get ready to do some voltage tests here uh, without putting the whole, without putting the bias circuit in yet. Because once I get those extra wires on the switch, if anything's wrong, it's going to be kind of a mess taking everything apart again. So um, I have a 12AX7 tube in, but no output tubes. So we don't care what the bias is doing right now, actually. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, one of the things about working on one of these Music Man amplifiers is that the B-plus voltage at the point that it goes to the center of the output transformer is usually over 700 volts when it's in high. Um, that's not something to be messing with. Uh, 700 volts gets to a point where it's like 720, 725. It gets to a point where even if there's high humidity, um, you don't even want to get very close to it with your bare skin if you're grounded. Um, when I work on this, I'm going to have my voltmeter pre-hooked up to ground. Matter of fact, uh, some DMMs can't even handle the 700 volts. Uh, this one's rated at 1,000 DC and 750 uh, AC. So we should be good in any case. Uh, Music Man amp is not an amp, just like an amp, I guess, VT. There are a couple of amps that you do not want to start off at your first recap job or your first time servicing, because even lead layout can cause arcing and so forth. As I always do, I'm going to plug into a current limiter, uh, in this case, a 100-watt bulb, which won't help from it killing me if I do something stupid, but it will help from uh, causing anything, blowing a circuit breaker in the house, or burning anything up if anything's connected uh, incorrectly. So first I'm going to uh, connect the voltmeter up <clears throat> and our, our initial tests are just going to be everything to ground rather than testing across anything. It'll give me an idea if we're hooked up okay. So I'm going to take my uh, the negative lead on the voltmeter, set it first of all to volts DC, and then if we have to, and then I'll change it to AC to check for some of the stuff. Uh, this switch here is completely live with a tremendous amount of voltage. The center, uh, I'm so sorry, the ends, one or the other, both ends are live, and then the center is where the voltage gets sent to the diode board. <clears throat> And really, the first thing I want to test for is just voltage everywhere. So I'm going to slip the switch in here in its normal position. And screw a nut on just to keep that from being up where I'm likely to bump into it, mess up and bump into it or something. Because even if I got a shock between my fingers on one hand or my wrist and my hand, this will really pop you. I mean, all of them will. But as I said, this, this amp runs higher voltages than almost any amp you'll ever encounter. There, that's not going anywhere. I'm going to flip it. And it's, really close to the chassis, the bottom and it's really close to the chassis, that bottom lug. We're gonna, I'm going to bend it. I can't do it here. When I take it back apart, I'm going to bend up those lugs 
they're very close to the chassis with this particular switch. Okay, I'm going to plug into the current limiter. And we have it in standby. I'm going to pop the, uh, again, only one hand above the wood of this bench at a time. So I'm going to grab on down here and we're going to pop the power switch. And it's lit up quite brightly, which means that something got messed up when the amp was uh, wired up wrong, like a capacitor or something. So I have some diagnostics to do now. <clears throat> and this is happening with the amplifier in uh, actually in standby. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of diagnosis and find out where the issue is occurring. <laughs> 